Okay, anong pang-angkop ang ginamit natin? Ha? Oh, Albert, may nararamdaman ka ba? Ha? Anong sakit sa'yo? Nahihilo ka? Gusto mo dali kita sa klinik? Poor nutrition ha? affects our students' well-being, physical and mental development. It increases absenteeism and reduces their learning ability. School-aged children go through remarkable physical changes and their food intake becomes a critical component of their individual growth and development. This video will help you understand the importance of good nutrition to school-aged children as well as the value of conducting a nutritional assessment. The demonstration will guide you to learn the proper procedure in measuring the height and weight of the children two capitals which are very important in schooling. That is physical uh, development or the physical well-being of the child. Children usually make absences because of um, illness and that could be related to poor nutrition as well. Second is brain development. So uh, poor nutrition even inside the womb of the mother, uh, that's the start of the mental or brain development of the child. With nutritional assessment, we will know if the child is gaining acceptable weight compared to his or her height, and then we can say the child is growing adequately or malnourished. Please note that when we say malnourished, the child can either be thin or overweight or obese. To determine school children's nutritional status, we will be using the 2007 World Health Organization Body Mass Index or BMI. BMI is an individual's weight-to-height ratio and used as an indicator for thinness, for being overweight or obese. It is computed using the formula weight in kilograms over the child's height expressed in meters squared. Because adipositive varies with age and gender during childhood and adolescence, BMI is age and gender specific. The value is located in the BMI for age table, specific for the child's sex and age measured. Let us say a 9-year and 10-month-old male child weighs 13 kilograms and he is 1.016 meters tall. So 13 over 1.016 meters squared is equal to 12.6. Using the depth at BMI for age boys table, from the first column, find the exact year and month corresponding to the child's age. Proceed by looking for the BMI value or the closest BMI value and then looking under what column the BMI falls. Weight assesses body mass. It is a sensitive indicator of current nutritional status. What equipment can be used to measure weight? For this demonstration, we will be using the recommended equipment the beam balance. This equipment requires us to follow proper set of procedures and measuring techniques to get the accuracy required for a measurement. First, place the platform scale firmly on a flat surface. It is very important to check the accuracy of the scale by bringing the sliding levers to zero. Make sure that the pointer is exactly at the middle. Now that our equipment is properly set up and calibrated, let us demonstrate the procedures you need to follow in measuring the weight. Begin by asking the child to empty his or her pockets. Remove any footwear and bulky clothing. Let the child stand at the center of the scale without touching anything, with hands hanging and relaxed on his or her sides. When the child is reasonably still, Start measuring the weight. Slightly lift the heavier balancing weight from zero position and move it along the bar. Let it rest on the notch. If the pointer moves downward, move the balancing weight to the left or until the pointer moves upward. Move the lighter balancing weight carefully along the bar until the pointer is at the center. The measurer should stand facing the scale with the gradations and in front of the balancing weight. The weight is read at eye level when the pointer is stationary at the center. 
read and calculate the total weight by adding the results displayed by the heavier and lighter balancing weights and record to the nearest 0.1 kg. Don't forget to return the balancing weight to zero position before removing the child from the weighing scale. It is recommended that weighing should be made not after a full meal and if possible, that all students in one class are weighed on a similar date to provide a common basis for the computation of the child's age. After taking the weight, let us now measure the height. Height assesses linear dimension composed of legs, pelvis, spine, and the skull, an indicator of past nutritional status. In measuring the height, stadiometers, microtwa, or height boards are used depending on what is available. When using a microtwa, we need to set it up properly. We will need two examiners to do that. First, determine the alignment of the microtwa using the plumb bulb. Hang the plumb bulb loosely until it stabilizes to equilibrium. Then mark the two points with a pen and tape. The first examiner gently extends the microtwa to its full length or until the number zero appears on the red line indicator window. Locate the first marked point and align the free end of the tape measure. The head bar should be hung loosely on the floor against a vertical flat smooth wall. The second examiner locates the second mark point of the plumb bulb and aligns the head bar before the first examiner secures the free end on the wall with a masking or book tape or nail. Examiners should check the alignment of the free end of the tape measure with the head bar on the floor making sure that the red indicator line is at zero before raising the head bar above the height of the tallest child to be measured. Once done, we are now ready to measure the height. Make sure that the child is standing upright while looking straight ahead. His or her ear canal is in the same level with the cheekbone. Shoulders should be relaxed, arms on the side, legs straight, knees together and feet flat with heels together. Push gently the tummy to help the child stand in full height. Lower down the head bar firmly on the top of the head but should not be pressed. Read the result from the red indicator line and record to the last 0.1 cm. As an alternative, we can also use the height rod attached on the mechanical beam scale if it is available. Remember, the position of children will affect the accuracy of the results. So again, ask the child to step on the platform and to stand straight while looking straight ahead, with the ear canal in the same level with the cheekbone. Shoulders should be relaxed, arms on the side, legs straight, knees together, and feet flat with heels together. Still keeping the head in position, raise the upper rod so that the headpiece is above the child's head and lower it firmly on top of the head compressing the hair. Read the measurement and record the child's height to the last 0.1 cm. With the initial report submitted by the clinic teacher after conducting the assessment, a division nurse will validate by conducting further assessment and inform the parents or guardians about their children's nutritional status and proper management or make necessary referral to a medical specialist. After using the scale, it is also important to keep the equipment in good condition and ready for the next assessment. Clean by wiping the scale with a dry soft cloth and store under room temperature protected from humidity and wetness. Make sure to check the accuracy of the scale before using it again. You can do this by having it tested using calibrated weights. Always remember that measurement errors will only occur if preparations needed are not observed before the actual measurement. That is calibration, the proper positioning of the subject and the accurate reading and recording. It will be good also to do several practices to promote good and accurate measurement of weight and height of our students. Nutritional assessment 
must be conducted to all students annually. Knowing who are actually malnourished would enable the schools, the Department of Education, to plan appropriate interventions for the school children. They would know who in particular these children are and would be able to determine how much resources are needed to be able to deliver this package of services for school children. Ano ang kailangan natin? Gamitin ang suklay sa pag-aayos ng buhok. Tantya naman sa damit Age, sex, weight and height are vital information to assess the growth of every child. If any of these is incorrect, assessment will be inaccurate. Accurate data is important to help every child to be healthy and to succeed in school. Ang mga mga bango, sabon ay gamitin ng maging maganda sa tumitingin.